morning. Rouser Radio, out of Lewis in East Sussex. ahead of ourselves this morning because it's not quite six o'clock but uh, then I get finger twitch. Uh, incidentally the reason that I uh, <laughs> stressed East Sussex this morning is I better stress East Sussex UK although perhaps by the tone of my voice or the accent or whatever you want to call it uh, it's pretty obvious that this is coming out of the UK. And to most people listening, I suppose, they wonder why. But we have a wonderful namesake uh, uh, city, town, in Delaware in the United States called Lewis. And believe it or not, the region that they're in is East Sussex. So uh, be careful when you're... Uh, make sure you put the proper postcode on when you're actually writing a, a letter because it just might end up uh, 5,000 miles away <laughs> and to somebody who's wondering what the hell they've got a letter <laughs> from you from, say, London or Kent or something. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're, this is Keith Hayes and we're Rouse the Radio, out of Lewis, and uh, uh, just uh, for the next half hour we'll have a little chat about the things that hopefully concern us all. Uh, local but not parochial, Things that happen nationally and internationally that might impact on our life here, not just in Lewis, because we are uh, really trying to serve the tiny towns of East Sussex. Tiny towns? Well, uh, somebody said, oh, uh, what's a tiny town? And we got talking about tiny towns, and I uh, uh, mentioned the movie The Last Picture Show. If you really want to know what goes on in a tiny American town, it's a, quite an old movie. I think it's about uh, the 1960s or, or possibly 1970s. Brilliant movie. Uh, if it comes on to the, the late night show, because it will be late night, uh, do catch it, the last picture show. But that was a tiny town, and I, I think that they were just a few hundred, uh, as opposed to our tiny town, which is 9,000 or 10,000 now, I think, nudging. And... Um, uh, uh, no, actually, we're about, about uh, aren't we, to 15 or 16 or 17,000 in Lewis now. It was 9,000 when we had 63 pubs. That's right. That's why 9,000 or six in my mind. But most of the uh, communities across from Battle to Brighton are less than 100,000 people. We total uh, about one and a half to two million uh, right across East Sussex and, uh, and, and touching on the borders of, of Kent and uh, West Sussex. But uh, we are still relatively tiny towns compared to the massive cities uh, which have, uh, you know, 14 or 15 million. And for that matter, uh, some of the cities uh, that are only 4 million. But 4 million is a fair old size, and we have nothing like that. We're a rural county, and uh, we've got beautiful, beautiful countryside. And I hope that the government initiatives for extra building and, and so on for houses does an impact on that. I do understand the need for housing, but it seems to have become a sacred cow. Nobody can say nay. And of course, it's got Lewis District Council into a right muck because um, they tried to raise money. Heavens, they're always raising money. <laughs> increased increased uh, council tax <laughs> again. They're always raising money and uh, 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 raising the the cost of things, or getting money out of us, uh, and they uh, are still cash-strapped. So you wonder what, what on earth they spend all their money on. Certainly it's not efficient uh, governance. That remains as bad and poor as ever. And the old uh, East County Council, uh, East Sussex County Council, isn't much better. Uh, they uh, have, have got themselves into a, a right old muck and had to get some extra money from the, from the government. Is that because we're rural, do you think? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think that it's uh, that much with what's going on in Westminster is we've gone topsy turvy. Uh, we we have mucked around with politics so much that now we don't know uh, uh, what efficiency is and what it's not. Uh, I was a bit disturbed to see that, and I very briefly mentioned it that the West Midlands Fire Service now have. Uh, in the examination to become a fireman is uh, if you're white, uh, you have to uh, uh, get 
at 80%. 80% in the examination to get into the fire service. If you're black or a lady, you only have to have 60%. Now, that to me is crazy. I mean, I'm sure that black people are as appalled as I am to think that that's happening and that women are as appalled because that's not equality. <laughs> that, that, that's this silly ratio thing. And, uh, and this is, 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 it becomes anti-discriminatory. I want firefighters who can do the job. And if they all turn out to be black, or for that matter, all turn out to be women, I don't give a fig. As long as when they turn up to my house, if I got a fire, they know what to do. And when are we going to go back to trying to get good, efficient people instead of having all these isms and ratios and so on. Okay, that's a very unpopular way of looking at things at the moment. I, I don't care. I really think that we've got bad governance uh, because we had Blair's babes and uh, um, uh, what was it, Cameron's cuties uh, and, and, and so on. Let's have a house full of ladies if they're good enough. And if you say, okay, women and, and ethnicity uh, is discriminated against, uh, then let's, let's by all means tackle it, but not, not by just changing the rules so that we get poor governance, poor services, and all round our lives get into a mess, because they certainly are in a mess at the moment. We don't seem to have anybody who can do anything efficiently. <sighs> That includes me, because I keep on pressing the wrong buttons. But let, let's have a little music so I can get my breath and have another rant in a minute. <laughs> this one is called, uh, oh, Ben Sound. Uh, those lovely, lovely people at Ben Sound who turn out uh, really a, an awful lot of music, and it's really very good stuff, but it doesn't have a wide audience. And I like to think that we're giving Ben Sound a good audience because they, uh, they actually let us use this stuff for free. But one called a Funny Song. So let's try funny song and see what it sounds like. disastrous for early in the morning, although, of course, many of you will hear this later in the day, uh, not, uh, you don't get up early, and uh, um, I do, <laughs> although I must say that uh, I am able to be, uh, sometimes if I'm not going to London, I can uh, do this from the comfort of home, uh, mostly I do it from the runaway bistro on uh, Lewis Station. Terrific place to have coffee, whether you're going to on the train or not. It's a, it's a lovely, lovely place. And strangely enough, <laughs> it has stayed there for 30 years. And uh, hopefully, if those silly people at, at Southern Rail don't tamper with it because they always keep trying, is uh, that uh, the, the, um, 
it, it is almost the high street. It is almost the, the old high street. It's a lovely place. It's got lovely people. It's got lovely coffee. It's got lovely sandwiches, uh, and, uh, which Princess Diana tried at one stage. She heard about the, the famous bacon sandwiches. <laughs> she was passing uh, through Lewis uh, without any fanfare and stopped. <laughs> Had her chauffeur apparently <laughs> pop down and get her a bacon sandwich <laughs> from the runaway. <laughs> Only in Lewis. <laughs> Only in Lewis. Uh, anyway, I've got lost now. I forgot what I was talking about. Never mind. <laughs> oh, uh, um, I, I think that uh, the one thing that I do have to talk about, and I'll remember in a minute <laughs> what I was talking about, uh, is um, the weather. Uh, because we are expecting snow. We are told, actually, that the weather forecast from this was that it was snow overnight, and I just wonder whether, in fact, uh, I haven't peered out this morning. It did snow, I don't think so. No, it hasn't. So the weather forecast was wrong. Um, and that's OK. We, uh, window of the studio was a bit steamed up. Um, but, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so no snow so far, but uh, it is threatened. And uh, do be careful. Uh, but whether it's snowy or not, it's certainly very cool. Be careful when you, you go out. Do wrap up. Very easy to uh, uh, take this sharp frost and think that you can just bear your chest against it. Uh, it gets to you. It carries, uh, it carries warnings of health. Uh, so once again, uh, watch out for the cold. Now... What I was going to talk about is the fact that, uh, and I can't stay away from it, the uh, Brexit vote took place last night. Uh, and uh, um, Theresa May won the first time in a long time on a Brexit vote uh, uh, support for her uh, policies. However, uh, along with it, apparently there is a proviso that they, we can't leave, we shouldn't leave with a no deal. That might actually bring a smile to some people's faces because they said let's go out without a deal uh, uh, but it, it does give her uh, a chance to go back and negotiate with Brussels guess what <laughs> Brussels sort of immediately said we ain't talking <laughs> we, we, we're not gonna we're not gonna face up to you you've got no more concessions from us very typical of the the, the, the brutal way that uh, the eu operate doesn't matter whether you're for or against brexit that's got nothing to do with how the, the eu operate uh, one of the things that is so much dis uh, unrest about uh, the eu is it's a dictatorial it's got to change if it wants us to stay, and if it wants other people who are threatening to leave to stay, it's got to change. That's the whole point, that's the whole issue of this thing, is the EU is not a workable institution. Unless you, as Mikhail Gorbachev says, you want to rush towards the old system used by the Soviet Union. <laughs> it's, that's, it's as simple as that. If they would back off a little... I think that we would back off a little. At the moment, though, it looks like High Noon. <laughs> that wonderful movie, uh, the Grace Kelly one, the very first one. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> it's a bit early for you to have that. Uh, but a, a really dramatic movie, uh, one with great atmosphere. But, uh, um, of course, it, it's all about a, a standoff between uh, the, the sheriff, <laughs> the, the people, uh, and uh, uh, some, some bad guys coming into town. Uh, the one thing that Theresa May has got is that uh, the, the renegade seems to have joined her side, or at least he's willing to talk. Uh, and uh, Jeremy Corbyn has said, uh, OK, uh, last time I wouldn't chat on your invitation, uh, but now I will. Uh, so I suppose really the game is changing in that sense, is that it is now going to be the UK versus the EU, and one of them is going to blink. <laughs> Either <laughs> there's going to be a, a real back down, or uh, uh, there will be some concessions. Uh, of course, this question of the, the hard border uh, with uh, Ireland comes into into place, uh, and people, you know, uh, the, the, the big... Lorry companies are, are saying, well, we, we, we can't go back to a border that's hard and so on and so forth. But you know what is a hard border? I think this is a, 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 a bit of a silliness on behalf of a lot of uh, people who want to use it to entrench a position. 
You know, there are so many countries across Europe that have had so-called hard borders, and they've, they've got over it. <laughs> they, they, they don't have soldiers lined up along the, 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 the border. Uh, they, they, they can still get goods through transit without a, a, a sort of nonsense. And anyway, uh, what, one of the wonderful things about the Irish border is that <laughs> the, some of the farmers there, because it's such a wild and winding border, <laughs> have been cheating the vat for years. They, <laughs> cheating the, 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 the subsidies that they get from the... <laughs> from, the EU by uh, taking their cows over the border and back again half a dozen times a day so that nobody knows whether they're getting UK subsidies or, or EU subsidies. I say good for them. <laughs> and they'll continue to do that anyway. So I, I really find it very difficult to get excited about it. Now, people will say I'm making light of a very serious issue. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is we do tend in this whole debate, because it is so emotional, uh, to, to take some issue and then get entrenched. Instead of saying, look, how can we, how can we actually resolve this? We don't. We say, it's there. <laughs> Nobody can do anything. Oh dear. Keith, you're having a wonderful morning this morning. Wonderful morning. <laughs> We've got to calm you down again. Uh, well, what about, uh, uh, something called, uh, uh operatic? Uh, which is, uh, I don't know. I, I did listen to this earlier. It may be okay. Let's try it. Pleasant enough as well. I mean, let me say this to anybody who uh, who thinks that they're going to hear uh, pop music or even well-known popular music on this uh, station, uh, on this channel, they uh, they're going to be disappointed. Uh, I mean, not only are we experimental in the whole channel, but we are also experimental with the music and. Much of this music is, uh, doesn't hear the light of day uh, on uh, any of the regular radio stations that you would listen to, uh, but it gives a chance of different music, a new type of music, to uh, be played. And some of it is very, very pleasant. Um, so that's what you're going to get from here, uh, <laughs> apart from a lot of ranting and a, a, a lot of... Uh, uh, taking a look at what's happening either locally or internationally that's going to affect us. 
And one of the things that is uh, local that is going to affect us, and I started to talk about the, the runaway, I suppose that was my train of thought, uh, because uh, the train of thought is about trains. And the, the train uh, yesterday, there was a, a breakdown. So if you wanted to go to Brighton, I think you, you had to go via Haywards Heath. Um, and that, that's the problem, really, isn't it? I mean, that's not a very long line, the Brighton line. Why we can't have an emergency crew that can get there pretty damn quickly, I don't know. Uh, because it is a lifeline. Uh, we we do need to get to Brighton. It's it's a big big city. Uh, uh, it's half a million people, and uh, we need to be able to uh, hop down there very quickly. And uh, the train is a vital uh, link. Uh, but of course, uh, the train services are not very good. They are just about as good as our governments in in Westminster and our local governments here. Uh, that. That's why I, I really think that we we need to get our act together and make sure that we get the very best people for the job. And there's a survey that has come out in the, the Sussex Express uh, that, well, they reported it, let's put it that way, it's not their survey, uh, but uh, that people in East Sussex are the unhappiest in the country uh, with their train services, and one can understand why. Uh, they uh, rarely, uh, uh, in the other evening, I I had to go to London uh, uh, on Monday, I think it was. <laughs> Trains leaving here were great. I broadcast from the runaway, and I can time myself to the second in the morning. Quarter to six, six o'clock, six fifteen, six forty-five. I catch the six forty-five. Bang on time. Mostly, they get to their destination on time. Sometimes a bit of a hassle at Gatwick, but uh, uh, other than that, or and sometimes East Croydon, but but other than that, uh, perhaps a few minutes late, but not too bad. In the evening, dreadful. For some reason, it's it, go, it falls apart during the day, and if you can't be consistent, and that's poor service. Now let me hasten to add all the. the organizations that we we criticize at the moment uh, the county councils uh, the, the transport system and so on they all have at the front desk delightful people and you can't find more delightful people than those at lewis station they are just superb and they are friendly and they're helpful and they're kind and they've always got a smile on their face, and travellers aren't the easiest people to look after. So the front of house staff, and that, that goes for, for Lewis District Council as well. The people on the front desk are lovely. What happens after you can't see is just appalling. It, it, it all falls to pieces. And the, the, the thing is that somebody has told them somewhere upstairs, because they don't seem to have much internal PR, uh, uh, advice or even departments for that matter. They've got people that can paint pretty pictures for brochures but other than that they don't seem to have much PR. But somebody's told them if you actually have uh, nice bright friendly people at the front nobody will worry too much what's going on in the engine room. Well we do worry about what's going on in the engine room because it's all falling apart on both the, the, the transport and the, the county and the councils. Uh, so they've, they've got to do a lot of rethinking and the, uh, the the surface PR for the railway company is is not bad announcements all the time and and uh, you know pretty posters and so on it's just the running of the trains and it's because basically they are they think operationally we've got to have this this uh, uh, train here uh, and uh, if something goes wrong, uh, what we'll do is we'll replace it with a train, and if we have to throw the passengers off to do it, we'll do it. Now, to some extent, that's because the government pings them, <laughs> it finds them if they uh, actually uh, don't perform the services uh, to satisfaction. Uh, so that means that the train companies find ways to dodge it. And when you dodge it, what happens? Who is it that... Uh, 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 ends up with the raw stick. <laughs> it's, the, it's the passenger. Well, now, who are the trains for? Are they for the train drivers? Are they for the train operators? Are they for the government? Ha-ha. 
or are they uh, for the, the, the people that travel on them? Seems obvious to me, but it's not obvious to anybody else who has anything to do with transport. What a pity. What a pity. Now, my mouth is drying out, uh, so if you'll forgive me, I'm going to pop a little pastel into my mouth, uh, and I'm going to play one more uh, thing before we, we go. Uh, and I think there's uh, something here called Unknown Longing. Uh, so let's see what to Unknown Long for. Well, we're coming up to the half hour. And since we started a minute early, we can steal a minute this morning. But it's uh, now 26 minutes past six while this is going out live. And uh, that gives us three or four minutes to end off. So what have we ranted about this morning? Well, we've ranted about uh, the ratios because of the fire service in West Midlands, who are making different rules for different ethnicities, white, black, women, and so on and so forth, uh, and uh, at, at the cost of efficiency, which our government did quite some time ago with the Blair Babes and Cameron's Cuties and so on. And I think that we're reaping the wild wind. And I'm not suggesting that any of those cuties are, uh, are not competent, uh, but if they're there because they are uh, women... Uh, then uh, they're suspect, just the same as it would be reverse, as if it was there just because they were a, a man, it would make no difference. Uh, it's, it's efficiency and skill and ability uh, that we look to for our leaders. We talked about the trains, uh, we talked about the weather, uh, we talked about a number of things this morning, uh, but the, the main one, I suppose, is that it's showdown at high noon between Mrs May, the members of Parliament, and them people in Brussels. Oh, my goodness me. What a wonderful showdown. Oh, uh -huh. Tex Ritter, all is forgiven. Come back. Do not forsake me, oh, my darling, on this sad wedding day. Well, let's hope it's not divorce, uh, at least a, a, a nasty divorce. With the EU, if divorce we are going to be... <sighs> But it's going to be pretty dramatic. And since it affects all of us, let's hope the drama has a happy ending. That's it for this morning. Keith Hayes with Rouser Radio out of Lewis, East Sussex, with uh, plenty of rants <laughs> and, and plenty of uh, views, none of which I suppose will be very popular. But what the hell? Public debate is what it should be all about. Here we go. Toodle Pip. <laughs>